Welcome to Inside Marine. Your host today is me, James Ward, CEO and founder of Marine Resources. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Chips Howarth, CEO of Cyclops Marine. Chips is a multiple world championship winning sailor who also coached the British team ahead of the Athens Olympics. All of this whilst having a highly successful over 25 year career within the marine industry leading sales and marketing activity, teams and strategies for some of the industry's most recognized manufacturing brands. In 2000, Chips joined Selden Mast as their sales and marketing director, doubling their sales before moving on to becoming sales and marketing director at Ocean Air Marine, which saw incredible gr growth during his time there, culminating in the successful and well-documented sale of the business. Today, now, Chips is CEO of the exciting new marine tech startup, Cyclops Marine. Welcome to the podcast, Chips. Thanks, Rory. Thanks. So we like to start off right at the beginning, as always, to going right back to where it all started. How and why did you get into the marine industry? Uh, well, it's a, it's, I'm a qualified geologist, so I used to work for Shell Oil, and uh, I was working for them, but I was sailing with a, with a great guy called Zeb Elliott, who was the marketing director at the time of Holt, and, and I think I was just, I was loving sailing, it was my passion, and, uh, and he, uh, did, through a series of conversations, I ended up stumbling into working for uh, Holt, which is a, a deck hardware brand for the, for the dinghy game. I thought I was going to do it for six months. It's like a little, almost like a gap year uh, while I was a, a geologist and I, I've never went back. I'm still waiting to get a proper job. <laughs> so what do you think it was that kept you there at, at, at Hull, um all those years ago? Well, definitely passion for saving. I just love boating. I love the people in it. But I think also I ended up in a commercial role. And even though I was actually a scientist, it just it sat with me well. I really enjoyed it. And I think I then made it a passion to, to learn about how to be good commercially, sales, marketing and strategy. And, uh, and I think it's just something it was, I said, maybe I had an aptitude for it. Uh, that I didn't know I had, you know, I, I, I learned it on the, on the school of hard knocks, really. Yeah. And I mean, obviously, kind of, you know, with that science background, but coming into more of a commercial role, was there a, you know, a key person back then that, you know, was really sort of teaching you the new tricks of the trade in, in sales or, 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 or was it just something that you sort of learned as you went along? Well, a bit of both, you know, in, the, in those early years, I did learn a lot from Zeb, you know, I didn't really look up to him. He was very uh, helpful. Uh, but probably in the early years, uh, there was a lot of mistakes made, a lot done on passion and, and, and enthusiasm, which can get you a long way, you know, when you're young. I probably started to really develop professionally in 2000 when I moved to Selden. And the CEO at the time was an older guy uh, called David Potter, who was a wonderful guy uh, and, and made a real success of Selden UK, which, would orig which was originally Camp Masks. And I learned a lot from David. And I think David probably inspired me to raise my professionalism. So I learned a lot from David. Okay. And, and what was the sort of things that he was kind of uh, sort of showing you or, or that you were taking from him at the time? Probably um, maybe just a little bit how the finances of a business worked. I started to realize about, you know, wh where was the profit generated? You know, what, what was the, the sales? What, what was really the, the economic engine behind the business? You know, you can get very excited and emotional about selling, but is it actually doing you any good? Uh, how aligned is your marketing to that energy? Um, engagement with the operational team so they understood what was happening. Maybe making the customer a little bit more central in, in the decision making. Yeah. Okay. So really, kind of broadening the, uh, the 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 view of the sales process and and understanding kind of how it connects with other parts of the business and that that sort of synergy within the within the whole organisation. Yes, I think so. And then I think what I also learned, my, my mind's churning now. I think also as we we're developing products, particularly at Selden, just really being more professional in. Uh, 
market research, understanding what the market potential of a new product would be, how it would reach the profitability of that, whether it was a good thing to do. Uh, you know, I see the marine industry as a, as a really innovative uh, industry, but are we always designing the right things? Okay. Yeah, that's really, really interesting. And, um, it, you know, over that your time there, as I said in my introduction, you, 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 sort of saw kind of big multiples in in sales and uh you know there was a clear time i i remember where where selden seemed to be just in sort of kind of really rapid growth and uh you know and i know that you were quite quite a leader in 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 that in that process and is, is there anything in particular that you think that you were doing back then that that really kind of made made the difference and and really helped that that growth yeah, well, well, back then, Selden. Um, when I was when I originally joined, I was the uh, I was also the product manager for a brand called Procter, uh, which uh, back then, which was going back twenty years, had been this this really wonderful racing brand, and and it sort of lost its way a little bit. And I think what we did from the marketing point of view is just get, get back to the basics of saying this this Procter brand, a Procter product, is the fastest possible product on the market. And we just took it back to basics. When you're making a decision in your in your racing boats, what rig you're going to buy, you, you have to start with saying, I've got to buy the fastest. And we just we just simplified the message. Uh, and, and that aligned with a lot of the product development we were doing. Things we were developing were by far better than anybody else. Uh, and we just wanted to simplify the message. So probably I look back now and what we did was just get back to basics and, and burn a hell of a lot of shoe leather, uh, explaining that to customers. I think that's uh, you know something I probably learned at Holt, but really applied at Selden uh, as we just got out there and, and shared that message. And, and it was it was amazingly successful. Yeah. I think uh, there's a there's a huge amount in 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 and allow, allowing the the customer time to really understand what what they're buying and uh, and I think that's missed sometimes it, it, you know in in sales it's very easy to get straight on your pitch I suppose and uh, and I think what you're saying is that actually you've got to you know leave, leave a bit of time for for that understanding and and that helping the customer to buy as opposed to just selling to them right. Yeah, exactly. But also communicating, maybe it's more the emotional message, maybe influencing the left hand side of the brain to say, if you want to win, you've got to use a proctor product or seldom products and, uh, and just engaging in more the emotional side of the sale. And, uh, you know, and, and, I, and I moved on from Selden after five years. And I've got to say, it's a wonderful journey, but I very much took that into Ocean Air that, that to engage people on their emotional buying journey uh, was, was a big part of our strategy. Great. And of course, the, the 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 ocean air journey in itself is is a real fascinating one, and um, you know, the, it's very well known the huge success and growth and relatively quick growth of, of that business in your in your time there. And um, you know, I, I I would love to sort of get your your perspective of that of that journey from kind of coming into the business and and really the, that sort of time through to when when you left. Yeah, uh, I mean, you asked me earlier, you know, who influenced my career. I mentioned Zerbin David, but probably fundamentally, the the, the, the owner, the founder of Ocean Air, um, Andy Fitzgerald, has probably been the single biggest influence on my career. And I think he really took, you know, he probably saw uh, that you know this, this this young keen guy who was starting to to develop some professionalism in business, and, and he really knocked me into shape. And, I, and he, he's a tremendous businessman. And I learned an enormous amount of him about professional business behaviours. Uh, and uh, with Ocean Air, I, th I think Andy just uh, he, he had he had a wonderful vision at just the right time. I think um, uh, you know, we, we were making interior products, we were making window treatments, we were making window coverings, just at a time when the industry realised when you were selling a luxury boat, the, the interior needed to be as engaging in the in the proposition process as how big the sales were and how big the engine was. If, if you look back 25 years ago, the, the selling process of boats was very masculine. It's all it was all very focused on the on on the bloke. If I if I can be sexist, you know, like I say, how big the engine is, how fast it was going to go. And about 15 20 years ago, the really progressive boat builders, the likes of the Beneteau Group, some seeker, started realizing actually we've got to make these boats beautiful. To, to engage everybody in the buying process. And, and we were just in the right place at the right time with Ocean Air. 
we were an interior product that made the feel of the boat uh, much nicer. So that's again where we could apply this emotional engagement. You engage people in the colors, the textures, the feel, and and you, you know that's a long way down the journey of people people's buying decisions. Yeah, that's really really interesting, and I know that um, you know certainly in the the, the latter years at, at Ocean Air there was a real kind of very focused mission and 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 i i remember having a, a wonderful conversation with you at the, the london boat show um and you were sort of really relating how you were approaching uh this sort of the strategy for for growth at ocean air to an olympic campaign and 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 i know sport is something that's that's very important to you and you know you have a very successful background in business and sport and uh and i i, I I was just hoping that you could sort of take some of that um, theory and just talk about that now, that relationship between focusing on your business strategy with relating it to, to your success in sport and how you approach that. Yeah, no, you, you, you're right. And I, I also got a little bit of enjoyment out of that as well. I think in sports, usually the goal setting is very clear. So if you're an Olympic athlete, the, the goal is irrefutable. It is the gold medal race on race day. It doesn't matter how far away it is. The end goal is so clear. So the journey is to work back from that, that deadline as to what is the, what can I possibly do to influence, to control the controllables and do the best possible thing I can, whether it's developing myself physically, mentally, and, the tech, and in, in sailing in technology. And, uh, and, and it's then building that plan, that roadmap to the end goal. And I think so, so it becomes very much about goal setting. I just feel in sport, the goals are usually very clear and laid out, whether it's a you know, dinghy championship, you know, the date of the world championship sort of set. Uh, and I think just applying that goal setting to industry, to, to business, uh, whether it's short term goals about hitting sales targets or marketing strategy and then working backwards, what are the activities we're going to do to, to then hit that, that goal deadline? And I see a lot of business owners who they allow a lot of mission drift and allow that goal to drift because it's an easy thing to do. And I think what, what sport um, does, and I, and I see not just what I've experienced in sailing, you see um, you know, business advisors that have come out of profe other professional sports. I think generally what they're bringing is a, is a mentality of, of working towards focused goal setting and, and then delivering a plan to fulfill that goal. Uh, and that's something you know, Andy and I, I felt we, we did both well, but also it was real fun as well. You know, we set some targets within Ocean Air in terms of growth and market reach and, and what we wanted to achieve. And, and we really stuck to them. And, and what I would say is it made the journey a lot more fun. Mm. Okay. And and I suppose also the um, re, re, like changing those goals along the way, you know, and understanding if there's if they don't quite go to plan, you know how how much you sort of assess and review that and 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 amend amend those goals as well and and the importance of that i know that that's something that's that's very important along that sort of journey as well don't don't give up if you don't hit it first time sort of thing yeah well i mean two two massive things have happened in the last 15 years which which are exactly what you're saying there wardy i mean one was uh, 2008 we were growing ocean air in the years leading up to that, uh, 20, 25% a year. And then when 2008 hits, you know, the financial crisis, uh, you know, we really had to restructure things. We couldn't just stick with the same single-minded goal. And I think COVID has been the, 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 the second big bombshell on the, on the economic world. Um, but, uh, you know, anybody who lived through the 2008, nine in a senior business role has I've got the scars, but the learnings from that as well, you know, there's modern phrases I hear now about pivoting your business. We were probably all doing that sort of thing back then. Uh, and, but it was a real challenging time and you, you learn through those things. But yeah, you do have to absolutely reset your goal. And something I always feel about the marine industry, because I know a lot of brands right now are saying they're growing exponentially and it's really great times right now. Um, I just feel the marine industry is like the normal economy on steroids. When the times are good, uh, the, the people have free cash available and they go out and buy toys. So the marine industry really booms. In a downturn, people rein in. Um, discretion we spend and so then our downturns is exponential as well so you know we, we in the marine industry really do ride a roller coaster if you look at the industry over a long period of time and uh, and that's when you have to reassess your goals I think 
Yeah, no, that's a really, really interesting insight and an analogy on that. It's uh, it certainly feels like a roller coaster in in what we do, but most of the time. So, uh, but I think I think you're accurate. But it also feels that we we are all on a bit of an, an up an up curve at the moment, which is which is great. And um, but that I think that that leads us on really nicely to. Um, where we are now, you know, in the in the present day, you know, you're the the CEO of of this fantastic tech company, and maybe you 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 bring the scars from those 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 tougher years in the, your roles at maybe at Ocean Air, and and you, you've taken on this role during COVID. I mean, tell us what's happening. Tell us what's happening now, and 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 have you sort of used any of those kind of learnings from before in in how you've kind of uh, navigated the business in the last twelve months? Well, yeah, it's been a bit of a baptism of fire. You know, taking on this. Uh, I mean, first off, I would say is you know the technology we've got here at Cyclops is outstanding. What we're trying to do with it in terms of giving uh, sailors just suddenly this visibility of what's really happening inside their boats, both in a live situation and they can analyze it later. Uh, and also safety as well. You know, we're getting more and more customers now realizing that actually I can sell more safely because I've got more awareness of what's happening around me. And, and the, the roadmap of stuff we've got coming is re- really exciting. So again, maybe that is a bit about the goal setting. You know, we've, we've, we're, we're very much on a, on a journey here. Um, the, the good thing when you start a business um, f- from zero, you know, if the world falls apart, you're not actually, you don't, you can't really go any further backwards because you, you didn't have anything to begin with. So that that was the irony, the irony of uh, Cyclops. When I joined the company in February last year, we had no customers. We only just had a limited product line. And then the world fell apart a month later. So nothing really changed for us. Uh, and, and what's been an exciting journey is just, just building up the awareness, getting it in front of the right people. So it's, it's been a, a, a great, uh, you know, ex- and, and we've been still very early on that journey. But, you know, we've established distribution around the world and, and we're growing rapidly now. I, th- I think what I am finding is, is every week almost there's a new challenge and it's linked to growing pain really. and, and And that's really that's really fun. I'm really enjoying that. But, uh, occasional headache, but it's, it's good fun. Yeah. yeah. And and where did you really kind of put the energy in, in the last 12 months? I mean, it sounds like, you know, whatever goals or plans that you had in, in place didn't really change. And uh, I, know, I speak to a lot of business owners who, who have come out, got to this stage, who, you know, in, in a very strong position because they got just very laser focused on, on some core things that they, they made that very conscious decision to put their energy into. I mean, what was the, the big the big priorities um, for you then in the last 12 months? Well, you know, I've been a sales and marketing director for 20 years, but actually I realized, you know, to be a CEO like you, Wardy, there's actually more disciplines. You know, I was, I've been sitting at board tables for a long time observing what other divisions were up to. When it's suddenly completely on my shift, yeah, I've just been learning a lot about how to be a CEO, and I think probably personally, that's the biggest journey I've been on. And and what I uh, and, and what is the way I've managed my time is I just feel like my life's like a pie chart, and I'm, you know we've had a lot of R uh, uh, and D and, and development going on. We've had a lot of um, uh, setting up of operations and and and, uh, and establishing that. A lot of sales, a lot of marketing, and trying to spend an equal amount of time in each. I think one of the most important things I did was, was recruit a really high quality sales director. And I think what was really important for me was to was to give those reins over to Tom, who, who's doing a great job. But also, um, you know, I was no longer the sales director. I've done that for 20 years. I have to commit this time to the other disciplines. And probably emotionally, that's been the hardest part for me to, to let go of the sales. Yeah, I still I don't ask Tom, but I think he'd probably say I still haven't quite done it every day. <laughs> so, but I, yeah, 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 yeah. No, I, I can imagine it, it's it's a difficult it's a difficult one that, and and I uh, and I appreciate the the challenge of trying to be in many places at the same time and give give your energy to to and 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 how important to you is it um, bringing in, I suppose the you know the right people into your business at, at, at the moment you know and 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 how are you kind of uh identifying and deciding who is the right people for the business at the moment yeah and, and that's that's a really interesting question because uh you know we are growing quickly and we are constantly recruiting 
but because we're still a small company, there's only seven of us, every single person is actually quite a big impact because there's so few of us. Uh, so making that decision is really crucial. And the company's changing so quickly that just making sure we've got the right skill sets. And I mean, what's great is, and we have got an amazing team here. Every member of this team is some of the best people I've ever worked with. And uh, so I would say now we, we, we're probably looking for another couple of people. And, and maybe the biggest criteria now is that we fit into the culture. Uh, maybe the most important thing for us now. And you know, I'm still probably thinking about this on the hoof. That, that that's probably going to be the most critical that we fit into the, this the, this uh, you know wonderful uh, business we're building. So culture uh, alignment may be the most important. Thing. Yeah, and I think it's uh, I, and I think that's vital, and it's not something that we talk about a lot in in the marine industry um, in the conversations I have. But I personally believe is is one of if not the most important thing. You know, everyone's got to get on first and foremost and then everything else can be be torn taught or or, or or evolved so it's good that you're that's on your radar two things i feel the team do really well is every decision we make the customer is at the center of that decision how is this going to affect the customer and secondly ownership and, and that is what's wonderful everybody in, 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 the, in the cyclops team it's all about the customer and if i'm saying i'm going to do something i'm going to let it do it it's my you know i'll, I'll own it and deliver it and, and if these seem such basic phrases you know are, are these fluffy business phrases i don't think they are but i think the cultural phrases as a team mm. yeah yeah and how important do you feel it is at the moment to be really kind of in, involving everybody and obviously you've got a relatively small team but involving everybody in i guess the wider aspects of the business the the wider decisions of the business really getting people give vision of, of what the other people are doing in the business and really your vision for the for the company as well yeah I, I, good, good another good question uh uh probably an area i failed on a little bit just recently what what i would say is the impact of covid is we made a point particularly when we're in full lockdowns so we couldn't meet we were uh, regimentedly 8.30 every morning, we would have a whole team meeting every single morning just to get the flow of communication. What are the challenges in the business? How does it affect other people? What can we do together as a team? And, and we, what we've done is we've not stopped that. That's what's really interesting. Now we're all back in the office. Actually, we're not all back in the office because some guys were remotely, but we've never stopped maintaining that 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 connection every single morning in fact i, I lie we give ourselves wednesday wednesday off now one day a week now we, we don't have the morning meeting and i think that's been really powerful just to keep the communication flow going but i would say and it's this is the beauty of working in, in a small company with seven people that everybody knows what's going on and that is so wonderful to keep to keep maintain alignment and i do look back in the days at ocean air when we had to, by the end we had 200 people to keep everybody informed was really quite a challenge uh, and uh, it is wonderful being in a, in a little dynamic company you can be uh, you know agile and it's just brilliant it's, it's, I, I dread the day when we get bigger than 15 or something and we can't speak to each other every day which must be where you are Wardy. I, 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 i'm not looking forward to it. Uh, yeah yeah well uh, i'm sure you'll be there soon enough at the rate that, that things are going uh with, with you at cyclops but um I mean, you know, that's a really great insight to sort of what, what's happening with, with you now. And, you know, I'd love to just kind of go into the future a bit. You know, what, what's next for, for Cyclops? You know, what are you guys working towards? Um, and we've talked a bit about goals. You know, what are the, what are the goals going forward? What can we expect? Uh, well, I, I think what you'll probably start to see with, uh, with Cyclops is a, a little bit uh, of a fragmentation of our markets. I think our, our core business right now is to deliver racing sailors this, this next generation of how to make their boats go faster. And we're really on an early journey with that. So I'd like to see over the next uh, few years... Um, it become a standard thing. You go sailing, and as you're sailing, as, as we, you know, as, as, as kids, Wardy, when we used to race around, you know, you'd learn how to use a compass uh, as, as a compass number, and then you see guys now with GPS systems on their boats. And the next thing is going to be this sort of live rig information to help you set your rig up to, to fast numbers. And that, I think, is going to become, I, I hope, is going to become the standard thing. But we're also using this sensing technology to start sensing other important things. 
And I think that's what you'll see. We'll start delivering information. We're, we're really sort of an, an information gatherer uh, on a much, much wider spectrum. Uh, we're developing a, a really exciting uh, marina system that is going to inform boat owners uh, of things happening to their boats remotely, uh, things like water, slow water ingress, gas leakage, uh, and movement on boats, so basically theft. Uh, these are some of the biggest insurance claims that go on on boats. We're developing some alert systems to help with that. So it's taking this sensing technology and just bringing it to a wider and wider audience. Uh, and we've got some things happening outside the marine industry where people have seen what we've got and are looking at it outside of the industry. It's a really exciting journey, but also I, I, I just see more and more sailors will be adopt, adapt, adopting this technology uh, to go sailing, both for safety and for, for performance. Absolutely. And um, it's incredibly exciting to, you know, as a sailor myself to, to, you know, understanding what Cyclops could could deliver for me in terms of what I know about about my boat and, you know, around the race course, it's, uh, it, it feels again in a in a in an industry or a sport which is always evolving anyway now more than ever with foiling being uh, you know uh, available to the masses and 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 safe to do uh, to a certain extent and now the the, the technology like that, that you're delivering to the industry as well it's a really exciting time to be to be in our sport and in, in our industry i think i agree yeah absolutely well, uh, I, I wish you all the best, Chips. And and what we like to do at this point is just turn it a little bit more uh, to kind of finding out a bit more about you, Chip, Chips Howarth, you know, a, a, away from the business. And um, and we usually try and sort of get you to, to, to put a spotlight on that by asking you a little bit about if you had your perfect weekend, Chips, what would that entail? Well, uh, well... Uh... I don't know about my perfect weekend, but I'm, I'm going on holiday next week. I've not had a holiday for forever, and uh, I'm going. I'm going to go and run the length of the West Highland Way. Now, this is supposed to be the most beautiful trail in the whole of Great Britain. It's in the top ten in the world. Uh, but I'm going to be running 20 miles a day for five days, so I'll run 100 miles by the end. And I tell you what, I can't wait. I'm just so looking forward to it. And I tell people, and they look at me and go, you must be crazy. But I, I'm just loving the idea of waking up every morning and just, just running out into the wilderness and then finishing climbing through the highlands of Scotland. And uh, uh, So for me, it maybe doesn't quite answer the question, but a perfect. And I'm doing it with my partner, Lou, uh, who's, a, who's a great runner. So we're just going to be together running through. Through the, through the highlands of Scotland. So it's maybe not a perfect weekend, but it's definitely my perfect week uh, uh, I've got next week. That's huge. Yeah. Well, look, congratulations and uh, good luck with that, you know. I haven't done it yet. <laughs> yeah. Well, we know you'll get there, Chips. We'll know you'll get there. Um, uh, okay. Great stuff. So, uh, you know, lots of running, lots of outdoors, lots of uh, family time by the sounds of it is probably the, 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 the summary there. Um, and great. And then, you know, the other thing that we like to do just for a bit of fun is a bit of a quick fire round. Okay. So uh, I'm going to fire a few options at you. Just come back with the, uh, as quickly as, as you can with, with, with what you think. So um, builder's tea or flat white? Flat white. I'm surprised at that one, Chips. Camping or glamping? Yeah, well, I camp every year on the Isles of Scilly. That's my family holiday with my kids every year. So I'm going to have to say camping. So. Uh, bath or shower? Ooh, uh, it depends what mood. I'm going to say shower. Yeah. Plane or train? Train, 100%. I hate flying. Self-catering or all-inclusive? Yeah, on the basis, I've never done all-inclusive. I'm going to have to say self-catering. Uh, kayaking or paddleboarding? Kayaking. Opera or rock music? I, I'm going to say rock music because I'm an Oasis, because I'm an Oasis fan. So I'm going to say uh, yeah, rock music. Uh, the last one, maybe the most important: salt and vinegar or cheese and onion? Salt and vinegar, no brainer. <laughs> Quickest answer there. Great. Chips. Well, look, just one final question, just to wrap things up, and we always like to ask this at the end: is if you could give one piece of advice to anybody coming into the marine industry, maybe at the beginning of their career, what what would you say? Uh, well, I would say uh, it, 
enjoy it. It's a wonderful industry. You know, I've done a little. I spent a bit of time outside of the marine industry, and I would say that, that generally, people in the marine industry are the most wonderful people you can ever work with. So I would say, enjoy it. You, you're in a great place. Um, uh, don't sweat the small stuff. I think that's probably something I've learned over the years. In, 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 uh, sometimes because we're so emotional and passionate about our industry, the uh, it, it's small things can get a bit blown out. So, so enjoy it. Don't sweat the small stuff, I'd say. Great advice there. Well, Chips, it's been brilliant catching up with you and just chatting through the journey. And, uh, uh, and I've really enjoyed hearing about... Um, you know, sort of how you got to this point and, and what's coming next for you and, and Cyclops. You know, good luck with the business. Good luck with your epic run. And uh, and maybe you can come back on the podcast again soon and, and uh, tell us how it went. Cheers, Wardy. Thanks a lot. See you soon.